Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. If you've been following my videos over the last uh, year or so, uh, you'll see uh, that there's been a lot of amazing developments in the MVS 3.8 and the VM370 areas of the uh, mainframe operating systems. And both of these uh, operating systems have uh, received a lot of community, new community contributions uh, in things that would have been unimaginable uh, 40 or 45 years ago when those operating systems were released for the first time. And, uh, and uh, they've gone into areas that uh, are just simply uh, wonderful to me, uh, such as uh, new things that you can do with MBS um, over, for instance, my previous video just a couple of weeks ago, uh, where we show that you can export um, uh, data sets over uh, over a channel interface and then and then look at them over telnet or um, for instance this amazing new brex contribution over the last two three years by uh, jacob uh, peter jacobs and mike grossman over in germany they've uh, ported this uh, uh, brex or rex interpreter over to uh, to mbs and not only they've ported uh, this interpreter over to mbs they've actually added a lot of new and amazing uh, possibilities to this uh, and features to this uh, Rex interpreter. They were that are not even there on the Rex on the modern ZOS operating system. So things that are just amazing, uh, both on the TCP/IP side as well as on full screen side. And today in this video, we're going to uh, focus on these capabilities and show how simple it is to write a. Uh, a full screen application in Rex or Brex, if you want, for MVS 3.8 um, with uh, with uh, and and do something useful with it. So that's kind of the goal for the video of today. I hope it's not going to be a very long one, but uh, we're going to be coding as we go. So here I'm connected to my uh, mainframe um, and we log in as Herc uh, 01. And by the way, uh, one of the uh, things that uh, we're going to be doing is um, an idea that I got from the uh, Discord channel. So uh, there is thousands, I think by now, if I'm not mistaken, of, uh, of uh, people who attend our main from Enthusiast Discord. And if uh, below this video, in the description below this video, you'll find a link to uh, join as well. And somebody, I don't know where, had mentioned the calculator recently. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, so actually it's uh, the moderator of our mainframe enthusiast Discord uh, group. He mentioned something that uh, he would, uh, uh, Rex could be used to make an excellent calculator program. And so I thought about this for a second and uh, it actually Rex is almost, I think, ideally suited to write a small calculator uh, very simple one, obviously, for uh, uh, on the mainframe because uh, uh, Rex has a very useful instruction, and that instruction is called uh, Rex interpret the command uh, instruction. Let's see what it. Yeah, so let's la we landed IBM. So Rex has this instruction that allows to pass your pass onto it a a string and then the instruction will interpret the string so this way you can actually build uh, dynamically on runtime in new instructions and uh, and then have them interpreted and uh, and so if we pass on a string uh, five times three let's say um, as a string that interpret would actually in you you would then interpret that and put the result somewhere and uh, here is your simple calculator so the calculator that we're going to be writing today is actually just a one-liner and everything else that we're going to do is dealing with uh with a uh, full screen and see how simple it is to write a full screen application so um and in fact there is some uh, 
Okay, so here in the documentation that I also link to in the description below this video, uh, you'll see how it is uh, possible to create full screen applications or panels if you want, similar to the ISPFC list panels or Rex panels that you can do on COS, but of course on our very, very old by now, it's 2023 now, so this will make like a 44 or 45 year old operating system by now, but still very capable of doing uh, full screen panels. Even though IBM did not provide Rex for MVS 3.8, it would only provide Rex, I believe, for MVS ESA, which kind of came about, I want to say 15 to 18 years later than the operating system that we have here. And uh, we also don't have ISPF because that's a um, that's a, uh, a proprietary product of IBM. There is an ISPF that um, somebody has written for MVS 3.8 and it has a lot of capabilities and, but uh, we're not going to go into that in this video because not everybody has the new um, ISPF uh, installed for TK4, even though I've released, I think one or two videos that where I show how to do it. But today we have focused on stock TK4 uh, which is what 98% of the people have out there, or maybe 95, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. And uh, and then we'll write a very simple full screen uh, calculator for it. So uh, let's get started. Let's go. Um, and I have here a data set where I put all my uh, rec scripts. Like always, you start the Rex with a comment that's uh, required. So the line that I want to put in, so the, the, the actual calculator, let's put it like, let's do it like this. Okay, so now we have some space to work on. And I really like the Rev Edit editor. Um, there's, there's another editor by, uh, somebody called Rob Prince in RPF, and it's a good editor too, but I prefer this one. I think it's actually even better than the ISPF editor, if I have to be honest about it. So uh, the actual uh, calculator, we'll do something like this. Um, we expect the, um, let's say calculated in uh, to contain a, an input, okay. Ah, what did I do here? That's the input. So why does it have a line? I'm doing this on our Windows and on top of Mac OS and that has some issues sometimes with keyboard settings. Um, and so then we can say result equals um, so now we have to build that string, which the interpret instruction, uh, this one will then execute, right? So, okay, so let's build this string. Um, the string we're gonna build is gonna be something like BC out. So now we're doing basically the, the whole string that we want to interpret, we have to build it. And we concatenate that with the input string. And right now the input string, the input string is empty, but we're going to populate it in a second. Um, and so um, I think actually I want to put in a space in here. Yeah. And now comes the interpret instruction. So that, that is a Rex instruction that we can just say interpret result. And if this is interpreted, then BC out will contain anything. So if you say here, for instance, um, two times two, so now BC out will contain uh, four, right? So uh, this is really just the full calculator. So whatever people will put in, in the input, it will evaluate that expression and, uh, and then the result is going to be stored here in result. And now we just, everything else we're gonna do in this video is just dealing with full screen. So here's the manual. 
there are a few examples that are delivered with Brex. And I looked at those and I also had a chat with, chat with uh, Peter Jacob to clarify a few things. But um, let's start by uh, declaring some variables. So that we know those exist. So now um, we have to call import FSS API. So that's the API. So we have to import that API. Um, we're going to address ourselves to FSS, so the full screen service of Brex. And now we have to initialize it, call FSS in it. And so this will set up the full screen environment for us. And uh, now we just can can go ahead and produce a map. To produce a map, you usually would have something like, uh, what is it called? Uh, here. Title. Yeah. Okay, so we call this function and title and we say uh, regs calculator and now we can pass it a color uh, that's a nice thing about it so um, I know why it works some of the colors are shortened in a strange way but uh, like here red works u score but we're going to go with white um, and now, so we have the title on the screen. Now we say um, expression. We put it at uh, column, at row 10, column 19. And we say protected plus uh, um, uh, turquoise. Okay, so I hope that works. Mm, it work. So then we say call full screen text. Um, I'm going to say just a field to put this all in. Um, and I think we're going to put it like 28. And we make this protected. So, of course, the, the prompt itself is going to be protected as well. Okay, we make this green. We can change all that later. And now we define a field, which is where we get the input input from. Um, let's make some room. Field, we're going to call this field um, expression. Um, let's make this all the same. 10. It's going to be here, 33, with a length of, let's say, 8 for now. We can go and change that. Uh, yeah. Let's search here, FSS field. Field row column length attributes and initial value. Defaults to blank. Okay, that's fine. So um, now we build the next line. Result and we put it at eleven. Um, 
19 plus protected plus uh, same color again. And now we define um, basically copy this one. Um, and we put it at 11. Yeah, just basically the same. Just one, uh, one row below. And now we say call FSS field again. So now we have to define a field which will contain the result so we can show the result. Uh, results. So we can differentiate from this variable. Um, we'll make it protected with a length of 13. So we can, if it's a, a fraction that's very long, we can limit it to 13. But we can change all that later. So um, now uh, let's have something about. Um, so we're going to run this in a loop until the user wants to get out. So I think there's something called um, to handle uh, function keys. Terminate. Height. Uh, what is it called? FSS height. See if it says height. Protected. Let's see if this could work. So we call text with terminate. So we go, we get the height of the screen and then one above. Keep this empty for the time of protective and then high intensity. So this could work. Um, we'll, we'll find that soon enough. So, uh, so now the other fun, fun thing is we can actually, um, you can actually tell it where to position the cursor. So uh, we want the cursor, of course, to be positioned on the expression, on the input. So um, and we refer to this field, right? So the field, the two fields that we have are this one, results and expression. Uh, so this way we, we now position the cursor on this field, the input field. Uh, so that should be the whole map. <coughs> so now we do, we loop over and over until the user presses F3. So that's the easy part. I saw an example of that somewhere, but uh, we can just say turn code. Uh, F key equals FSS refresh. So now we refresh the screen. Uh, FSS refresh. Yeah. So we call it. And um, and see if the user pressed F3. So we say if F key equals 243, that's uh, P of three. And then leave. So we get out of the do loop here. So that's the way to get out. Otherwise, um, so let's create one more variable here, user input, okay, uh, C, 
So now we take the input from whatever the user put in here. And I want to strip it, so I want to remove all um, all blanks after. So I need the new variable user in equals strip. So we remove all. Uh, sorry. So now expression will contain whatever it's in here. So we strip it. Um, and now uh, we can say that's the input bcn equals um oh well actually hold on a second we need to first get it so uh, let's say fss f get so fss f get so this is how we get our input from the field sorry so yeah uh, you can see I'm not yet very familiar with it, but we get our input. And then we say, um, strip, of course, user in. Yeah. So that works. Um, so now we have whatever the expression is in here. It's now stripped and ready to be evaluated um, in this field uh, or variable. BC. How do we go? To do so let's think here for a second so uh, okay so now we can bring these two together and okay so now we have the result is going to be bc out i think it's a little bit nicer to read So BC out will contain uh, this string. So the result will contain this string and then the concatenated with the input that we got from this field. We interpret it and now result will contain the result, of course. Uh, and so now we have to put it back into the uh, panel. So we say call, there is an FSS set. Okay, so, and I struggled with this for a while because I was just forgetting the F. Uh, that's when I had to reach out to Peter and then he just say, hey, you're missing an F. So, uh, FS, uh, F set, the field is called results, right? And now we have um, the output which is in BC out uh, is gonna, so sorry, when I say the result is the string and they will interpret it and of course BC out will contain the correct uh, evaluation. Uh, so BC out is containing the output and one more fun thing we can do is we can actually change the color of this field now because we can show the user that we have evaluated the expression and I think it's uh, FSS f color or color uh, they have the american and the english spelling that's fun good thinking fss color and we say which field and we turn it into yellow so the user can see what happened and then we have to call fss cursor back again to the input so we're going to say uh, expression and now the end of the loop and when we finish we call fss close and then we return zero to whoever called it uh, so this should be really all there is to it um, let's look for immediate errors here um, I don't like how this looks okay so let's align those okay so we have this uh, fields here we call the import to FSS 
API, we address ourselves to FSS, full screen servers. Then we enable, um, initialize it, call FSS title. Uh, this is the title. Uh, we put in a text at 1019 uh, product protected. So this should work. Um, then we have field, we define a field at 10. Uh, 33 length 8 then we have a new result 11 19 just like this one so they're one over the, uh, the other at 28 then we have the result protect the green that's fine and we define a field called results um, which is 11 33 that's correct with length 13 and we protect the result because we don't want to change that. Then we put in uh, a string at the bottom of the screen about P of three, means terminate. We take the height of the screen. I'm not too sure about. Turns number available rows defined by emulation. Okay, that's, that tells us how big the screen is. That's good. Uh, one above and we protect it and intensive and then fss cursor we put it on this field here an expression this then we do forever we get the function key we refresh the screen fss refresh that's fine if the function key is 243 then we leave otherwise we get the user input from this field so we do a get um, we strip it, put it in this, so that's the input. We can, we build a string that's very similar to the uh, X instructor instruction on an assembler EX, uh, where you build a string and then you can execute it. Very similar. I, I think that's where uh, Mr. Kalishaw got the idea for interpret from, because it's a very handy instruction. We build a string, we concatenate it with the input, we interpret it. Now, BCI will contain the result. Um, we set the result into into here to this field with this value. Uh, call if it says caller, we turn it yellow, and we press and we put the cursor back again in expression and close. Okay, so why window? Let's give this a try. Very good. So you can see here, now we have a full screen panel. It automatically centers here, the name of the panel. So no idea what's gonna happen here now. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so this worked on the first attempt. I love it when it happens. So um, we can put in here now, uh, whatever we put in here is gonna be evaluated by the interpret instruction. And, uh, and put in there. So of course, one more thing we could do then now would be to add constants such as pi or the E constant or other mathematical constants. Um, but if you press F3, so we can run this again. Uh, and since it's in my exec, should also be able to just say, if I go to the command line, so I can save this. Yes, so perfect. So all I have to do is just say Rx calc. Um, let's go back to the main panel. I can also go here and say, very good. Okay, let's do a fraction. Okay, so you can see here, this is limited to 13. If we want to change it, um, longer obviously to make this uh, 18 and then we can make this longer as well the input we can make this like 10 or 
13. So let's see what happens if we do that. Yeah, so it's now much longer. And if I want to see how long this is, yeah, this is a little bit shorter. So maybe we make this uh, the same length. for both and maybe I want to uh, let's look at the colors for a little bit yeah I don't know if you like these colors we can make those um, I don't know, something else uh, terminate That is green. Two what colors do we have? White, red, blue, green. So there's not that many, but let's try blue. Okay, so because this is the color that we're using right now. And let's try again. Yeah, it's the same kind of blue. But uh, yeah, I kind of like this. Um, we could also, of course, change it so that it would just take the input from the command line and parse it immediately. So then you don't even need the full uh, screen panel. But uh, that works for me. Um, for a very simple uh, math, that works. Um, we can, you know, I leave it, I will put in the source code in the description below this video, but I leave it to you uh, as an, as a, as an exercise to also add some constants, right? So if you want to say, I, et cetera, et cetera, um, and E, stuff like that. So then those could be evaluated as well. And I leave it to you how you would put in here the evaluation of constants, uh, but it's certainly possible. Um, so this is it. I mean, I, I like how small and easy this is. Uh, really takes I don't know, 20 minutes to create a full screen app. And there's no reason why um, when you develop your own applications or play with MBS, you shouldn't be able to write your own uh, applications. Uh, this is all thanks to the amazing work of uh, Mike Rossman and Peter Jacob uh, in uh, Germany. I met with both of them uh, in the last few years. Mike Rossman, I met in Berlin last uh, 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 July, I think. And, uh, Peter, I met in Munich uh, once or twice. So, good people, good friends, very smart developers. And thank you for your contributions. And as I said, you will have uh, the description of this manual, as well as the source code, as well as the link to the Discord channel in the description below this video. If you have not subscribed yet, now would be an excellent time to do it. Otherwise, uh, have a nice day. Goodbye.